A couple videos ago, I compared my Red Scarlet W to the Canon R5. I wanted to see what the 8K RAW was all about and how it compared to my Red. Now these two cameras are very different cameras, so I thought today we would compare something a little bit more in the ballpark of my Red, the C300 Mark III. So why don't we fill up DeFranco and jump right into this. The blind test. Let's just, let's jump into the blind test. All right, there was the blind test. I showed you guys both images back to back. So what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. I am very curious to know which camera you thought was which. Have you left a comment yet? No? You should. Participation is fun. Camera A was the Canon C300 Mark III. Camera B was the Red. Did you get it right? Thinking back now, there was probably a little something that gave it away. The fact that I was filming Danny with my camera and he was filming me with his camera kind of gave it away. But anyways, some first thoughts. I am very impressed with the image on the C300, but why don't we start this off by talking about some of the specs. Starting with the C300 Mark III, you can do up to 120 frames per second at full 4K RAW, as well as you can do 180 frames per second at 2K. On the red, you can do up to 50 frames per second at full 5K RAW, and at 4K, you can do 120 frames per second. Per second. At 2K you can do up to 240 frames per second, but every time you lower your resolution you are cropping in on the sensor leading to more noise and less sharpness. And as well both sensors are super 35. With that being said, let's move on to the image. Now I'm going to try my best not to be biased here, but I do want to say that this image comparison does not fully represent the image of the camera, it is only the evidence that I have found in this scenario. If we were filming in a darker scenario or a different scenario we could have very different results. So please Please keep that in mind with everything I say. Starting with my red, I would say that the dynamic range is very solid. If something looks blown out, I can typically bring back the information using the ISO or just color grading. As usual, straight out of camera, skin tones do look very nice. I found that as long as you're shooting with the right white balance, the skin tones will always come out good. But you will typically find this yellow or green tinge that the reds are known for. And let's not forget global shutter, it always makes the image look very cinematic. Now when it comes to editing, I have not found a raw codec that is better than red's raw codec. Deck. It plays back super smooth and they give you more raw options than you will ever need. I would give the editing two big thumbs ups. But one big thing I noticed is how the highlights bloom off the sensor. Now I'm not 100% sure if this is the sensor, the lens, or maybe my ND filter, but let's compare the two shots of the sun coming through the tree. On the red, it creates a nice bloom effect, where on the Canon C300, it's a lot more sharp. Now I'm not sure which one is proper here. I would say my personal preference, I enjoy the bloom. I think it looks very cinematic and nice. I like that I'm able to reveal a subject by using a lens flare. I'm not sure if it's because because I was using a 24 millimeter prime and he was using an 18 to 35. I'm not really sure here, but I wanted to ask you guys which one you thought looks nicer. Okay, moving on to the C300 Mark III. The dynamic range is super impressive. This is thanks to the dual gain output sensor. It sort of creates like a HDR image. From what I understand, it analyzes information from two different signals and then we'll pull in the clean shadows as well as the clean highlights, combining them together into one beautiful high dynamic range image. And looking at this footage, you can really tell. When it comes to skin tones, I would say they require a little bit more work than the red, but are overall very natural. I did notice that the image does look very sharp or very detailed. Now when it comes to noise on the C300, uh, there is none for two reasons. The first one being the lighting conditions. It's very bright. There's no need for sensor noise. And number two, the dual gain output gives you an extremely clean image. Now when it comes to editing, I have one main question, I guess for Canon, maybe you guys. So if I'm shooting in raw, why am I looking at a log profile? It seems counterproductive and a waste of time, honestly. What is the purpose of log? The purpose of log is to preserve your dynamic range. Now I very well could be mistaken, but I think there's a reason why when you import red footage, it gives you a processed image that you have full range to edit. 
I just don't understand why log is necessary with raw footage. On top of that, changing the raw settings in Premiere is extremely slow. When you change one setting, you have to wait like a second for it to change. So if you're trying to like fine tune your white balance, you gotta just type in the number, wait a sec, type in a number, wait a sec. You can't really use the slider efficiently. When it comes to playback, it's pretty rough, although it's not as bad as the 8K raw footage on the R5, I often found myself dropping the quality down to one quarter. Another thing to mention, I'm pretty sure the file sizes were pretty similar, which is pretty great because Red is known for having very manageable file sizes, which means Canon is doing a great job there as well. So which camera is for who? So my camera is very different from Danny's camera. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is one of the newest line in Canon. And it's in, oh, actually, C70 came out, so maybe it's not a newest line. True. Kind this, of, it's fairly new. And this is the C300 Mark III? Yep, C300 Mark III right there. Um, one of the key features is the DGO, the dual gate and output. It's almost like the dual ISO, but it's not. It's like an HDR, right. uh, basically. It's a new technology that Canon uh, put in their cinema lines. Uh, even like the C500 Mark II doesn't have it. So it has a better dynamic range than the C3, uh, C500 Mark II. Interesting. Um, it also has the dual XLR input here. Right. This is like the audio control. The, the biggest thing I miss on my camera is um, XLR inputs. So I'd say your camera is more for like, you know, like being like a solo crew. Uh, you're going to go shoot a documentary. You throw on your shotgun mic. You're good to go. You can confidently get everything done. Yeah, there's, there's just a lot more you can't do on your own where on the C300 you can definitely get away with. Yeah, what I really like about the RED is because I did borrow this for the short film uh, two months ago, was it? Yeah. yeah, and what I really enjoyed was that, you know, I could just have the V-mount battery right here. Right. Whereas I need to buy a $2,000 accessory to have that V-mount and I don't want to buy like a third party one yet. So I'm just kind of waiting for that. Battery in the <laughs> C200 used to be, like if you had two, you could shoot all day. Right. Whereas the C300 Mark III takes up a lot of battery. So Interesting. it actually only runs for about like two hours for one battery, one A60, BPA60 battery here. Yeah. And one of the other feature that I love is, even like today when I was trying to vlog, I, I was asking you if you had the 72 mil ND filter and both of us didn't. Yeah. Uh, this has built-in ND filter and it yeah, comes in really handy. Yeah, that's another thing that I wish the RED has. And of course you can buy XLR inputs or built-in ND filters. It's just third party or really expensive from RED. You can do it. Anyways, Danny, thank you so much for bringing your camera and letting me uh, compare it. Um, I appreciate you. You're the man. So I would say, in my opinion, if you have a big crew and a big budget, the RED might be for you. If you have a smaller crew and maybe a smaller budget, maybe the C300 Mark III is for you. That being said, the price point of these two cameras are not that far apart. These are both fantastic cameras and honestly, I would be a happy camper if I had either of them. That is it for me. This has been the second part of my camera comparison series. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. You can follow me on uh, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, whatever you want. I don't care. I'll see you next time. Adios.